ingredients in your skincare and makeup products actually clog your pores. It's a topic that comes up all the time. I constantly see influencers talking about ingredients they tend to avoid because they don't want to clog their pores. They deal with acne, etc. And I mostly think it's wrong. It's an oversimplification of what might actually be happening with your skin. And a lot of the time it causes people to avoid products that might actually be good for their skin. Now, I have a really strong opinion about this topic, but for this video, I decided to reach out to board certified dermatologist, Dr. Jenny Liu, and also cosmetic chemist. There's two of them, Ava Perkins and Jane Sui. All right, so before we get into the questions for our experts, I do want to point something out. And this is something that I talk about even with my reaction videos. If you feel like a product is clogging your pores, I want you to take a step back and first look at your skincare routine as a whole and what you might be doing. Because a lot of the time, what is actually clogging your pores is everything that's getting stuck under your skincare products. So if you're not properly cleansing your face and you have grime and makeup and sunscreen left from the day, and then you go and put other products on your face, that is going to clog your pores. If you work out and sweat and then put products on top of your skin, that is going to clog your pores. If you are just not properly cleansing, if you're not using products in the right way, that might clog your pores. So you wanna make sure that you're thinking about all of this before you just blame a specific product and specifically an ingredient because it's usually not that simple. It really isn't. Now let's go ahead and get into the questions. And the first one comes back to what I was just saying. Are there specific ingredients that actually can clog your pores? In speaking with the experts, they all tend to agree that your pores get clogged when oil, dirt, and dead skin cells get trapped in your pores. And that's exactly what I was talking about when it comes to properly cleansing your skin. If you use occlusives and you're trapping dirt and oil and makeup and any other kind of ingredient or anything that's on your skin, then there's a very high chance that your, your pores are going to get clogged. Now, I realize you've probably seen products that say non-comedogenic on the actual label. So it leads you to believe, well, that means there are probably ingredients that are comedogenic, meaning that they can clog your pores. Dr. Jenny Liu says there are ingredients that can actually make your skin cells stick together a little bit more, which could then lead to comedones, meaning that they are comedogenic, but Ava does point out it's hard to look at an ingredient list and specifically point out these ingredients because you also don't even know the percentage that these ingredients are at in the actual formula. And also ingredients that might be comedogenic for people with dry skin, for instance, might not be comedogenic for people with oily skin and vice versa. And Jane makes the best point by saying if there were a universal list of comedogenic ingredients, ingredients that were guaranteed to clog your pores, then they would wouldn't use them to formulate your products with. So you really need to take this comedogenic skill with a grain of salt. Now, if you didn't know, the way that ingredients are tested to see if they're comedogenic or non-comedogenic is one of two different ways. The first one being rabbit ears. So they'll take an ingredient and they'll put it on the inside of a rabbit ear and they'll just kind of keep reapplying that over a period of time. And then they'll see, is it clogging the rabbit's ear in that area? The other way is actually on human skin, but it's not done on the face. It tends to be done on the back and Ava actually pointed that out too. And similar to the rabbit ear, they'll just continue to put an ingredient on a specific area. They'll do it several times over 48 hours and they'll do it for several weeks to see how that skin is reacting. And that's how they decide if an ingredient is comedogenic or not. Those two methods really are not the best representation of the skin on our face, because we all know the skin on our face is much different from the skin on our bodies and very different from rabbit ear skin. And I wanna point out, it's also just not the way we'd be using these ingredients. Usually we would have them in a product formulated all together, and then we'd be applying them as we go in our skincare routine. So we'd be washing our faces, we'd be applying them in the order that we need, and it just just would be a whole different circumstance in the way that you're using these ingredients. Now, I hate putting out a list and saying specifically there are these ingredients that can clog your pores because as you're seeing, this theme of the video is that it's not just about the specific ingredient. But when you think about ingredients that could be comedogenic or clog your pores, they tend to be occlusive, meaning that they can be thick, they can be oily. So think mineral oils, coconut oil, anything with fatty acids, anything that's going to be really rich is likely to be more pore clogging. But again, it always Always goes back to what is it that's clogging your actual pores? Is it the ingredient 
or is that the ingredient is being put on top of other things that could be clogging your pores. So besides properly cleansing your skin before you apply any of your skincare or makeup products on it, it's also potentially a good reason to exfoliate your skin. So using ingredients that are exfoliants like your AHAs or your BHAs, like a salicylic acid, which can actually unclog your pores and clean it out and is also oil soluble, meaning that it's going to break through that oil. So when you're using ingredients like that, products that exfoliate your skin, cleansers or even toners or whatever that have these exfoliants, you are getting rid of those potential dead skin cells that could clog your pores, that dirt, that bacteria, and even that excess oil that could be clogging your pores. Jenny also points out using ingredients like your retinoids that improve skin cell turnover can also help to keep your pores from getting clogged. And also keep in mind, the health of your pores really matters too. Now, I get it. You might not be convinced by this video and you might be like, I just know this one specific ingredient clogs my pores. Maybe it does. I think the most important thing to point out out here is that skincare is very personal. Your skin issues are much different from my skin issues. And I've said this before, everybody reacts differently to different ingredients and different products. If you have oilier skin, of course you produce more oil that could get trapped in your pores. So if you're using really occlusive products, and if you don't understand what I mean by occlusive, think like a really thick moisturizer, an oil that you apply to your skin, and then you already have oil on your skin, if you are trapping it on with more of these thicker products, the chances of it clogging your pores are higher. So that's really how you should be thinking about what you put onto your skin. I tend to have dry skin. So of course I can apply thicker products to my face and probably not get clogged pores. That said, I know that I produce more oil around my nose. So if I'm not really properly cleansing all of that off of my skin before I apply something that's super occlusive and moisturizing and thick, then I might end up with a lot more clogged pores around my nose. So this is the way to really think about everything. You don't want to hear from somebody that an ingredient specifically clogged their pores all the time, because that might lead you to avoid this ingredient, which makes you in turn avoid a product that you might've really enjoyed and seen great results from. So as usual, I end this video by saying, skincare is personal, your skin is personal, skin issues are personal. So context is key and thinking about how your skin is reacting to everything is always really important. If you if you have any other questions about comedogenic ingredients or you want to add any of your own thoughts, leave them in the comments below. You can also find me on social media. I'm at Susan Yara. I'll leave all the information for the experts we interviewed for this video in the description box below too, because all of them are on social media as well. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye.